Pancreatic cancer is a genetic disease that can arise through inheriting defects in specific genes that are passed on through the family, or more commonly through genes that become altered sporadically through lifestyle and other factors. Several different types of mutation or changes in DNA can alter a gene's function by making the gene more active or making it less active. These are caused by mistakes in the sequence of DNA and consist, can, can consist of a single DNA base being changed, otherwise known as a point mutation, bases being deleted or deletions, bases being wrongly moved to another area of the gene sequence, called a translocation, or bases being miscoded back to front, called an inversion. These changes can change the structure and activity of the proteins that are coded by the DNA sequence. It is the protein that carries out the work of the DNA and controls how the cell behaves through a series of checks and balances. In pancreatic cancer, there are two main types of genes that are often altered. These include genes that produce proteins that increase cell growth, prevent cell death, and promote cell survival. These are called oncogenes. And then genes that normally control the same processes or turn them off, and these are called tumor suppressor genes. Oncogenes are often changed to produce more protein, uh, called overexpression, or altered to change the protein structure, such that it does not recognize other proteins, which normally control its function. Or sometimes the gene is relocated next to another very strongly expressed normal gene that increases the oncogene's activity. Tumor suppressor genes, on the other hand, are often deleted or have mutations that cause the protein not to work, or other me mechanisms which prevent the production of a functional protein. KRAS is an oncogene which is like a molecular on-off switch, transmitting growth signals from the outside of the cell to the nucleus to turn on a set of appropriate genes. This process or pathway is called signal transduction. Normally, KRAS is only turned on for a short time, otherwise the cell will be getting continual growth signals. However, a single mutation in the KRAS gene can produce a protein that doesn't respond to the turn-off signals and provides the cell with a constant growth signal. This is one of the earliest changes in pancreas cancer. In the cartoon, it can be seen that other genes in this pathway, e.g. PI3 kinase or RAF, are also targets for mutation, further consolidating the on switch. Uncontrolled growth is a hallmark of many cancers, including pancreatic. There are three major tumor suppressor genes commonly altered in pancreatic cancer. P16 is altered in almost 95% of cases. P53 in a half to three quarters, and SMAD4 in about 55%. P16 is an important regulator of, of the decision to allow a cell to divide and grow through a process called the cell cycle. P16 inhibits a crucial decision-making point called a checkpoint and normally prevents a cell from dividing. When it is inactivated, this control is lost and the cell can enter into the cell cycle uncontrolled and rapidly divide. P53 is one of the most commonly altered genes in all solid tumors, including pancreatic cancer. It has many functions which normally keep the cell under control and properly managed. It has been called the guardian of the genome. It also functions like P16 to control the ability of cells to enter the cell cycle. And it controls the cell's decision to live or die by promoting a process known as apoptosis. SMAD4 is another gene that controls whether a cell will divide in response to growth signals. When the function of all three genes is inactivated, the cell is able to grow and divide at will. This picture shows where these genes become altered and how the pancreas develops from normal cells into what's called a pancreatic intraepithelial lesion, or a pan-in, which becomes more and more abnormal as the function of these key genes is lost. Eventually, the tumor is totally unrecognizable from normal cells from which it arose due to the uncontrolled growth and other processes that have been altered. As the tumor develops, it also gains more and more genetic changes. A recent study which sequenced the whole genome of 24 pancreatic cancers found on average that 63 different genetic changes were found in each tumor. What they also found was that each different tumor shared 12 common cell processes that were always altered. The knowledge that is being gained by these molecular studies of pancreatic cancer will eventually benefit patients by being able to develop tests called biomarkers that might help to predict the disease much earlier than we do today. Early detection means that surgery has a much more chance of being successful. Also, the knowledge that is being gained about the common cell processes 
that are altered in all pancreas cancers will lead to the development of new drugs and treatments that block these pathways, rather than using the current treatments like radiotherapy and chemotherapy, which are not selective and cause a lot of toxicity to uh, the patient. At Beaumont, we have been conducting uh, research in a precancerous lesion called intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. These precancerous growths arise out of the main pancreatic duct or the branch ducts. The growths are becoming increasingly detected as an incidental finding when patients undergo abdominal imaging procedures. They present the surgeon with a dilemma as to how extensive the surgery needs to be to be fully eradicate the, the threat that these lesions may become a cancer. Some IPMNs are probably not going to progress to cancer and are termed low or moderate grade, whilst others are more likely uh, if they are high grade or have already invaded out of the pancreatic duct. Currently, these different forms of IPMN cannot be discriminated by current imaging techniques and can only be assessed at surgery. The aim of this study was to identify potential markers for the discrimination of the high grade and invasive from the low and moderate grade that could be used in the future to identify IPMNs requiring surgical resection, as well as giving us insight into how they might progress to become a carcinoma, which might allow us to develop a biomarker to help in earlier detection. We use a specialized technique called laser capture microdissection, which allows us to cut out areas or individual cells from a tissue slice mounted on a glass, glass microscope slide. This technique allowed us to isolate specific cells that were either low, moderate, or high grade, or were invasive. We could then extract the genetic material, RNA, from these different areas and study which genes are different between them. This slide shows the analysis we did where we compared the less dangerous forms of IPMN, low or moderate, to those, those type which were more likely to become uh, cancer, the high and invasive. In this analysis, we looked at over 23,000 different genes and found 62 different genes that were consistently different between the two groups. The left panel of the slide shows what we call a heat map, where the red areas signify genes that are more abundant or overexpressed, and the blue represent genes that are less abundant or underexpressed. The patients are arranged on the left of the picture, going from low moderate at the top to high invasive at the bottom. What you see is a clear separation of the colors, with lots of reds in the bottom left and the top right, showing genes that are overexpressed in high and invasive, that's the bottom left, and genes that are overexpressed in the low and moderate, the top right. This could also be interpreted as genes being underexpressed in high and invasive. Some of the genes are listed in the table, and many of them are involved in the normal function of the pancreas gland. What is interesting, though, is that some of them code for secreted proteins, such as insulin or gastrokine. This means that it may be possible in the future to develop a blood-based test to detect them and help in the surgical decision-making as an early biomarker for the risk of cancer. Detailed knowledge of the molecular changes involved in pancreatic cancer progression will lead to improvement in treatment outcome and survival mainly through early detection of the disease. This will be achieved by a more personal approach to the surgery and rational selection of therapy. Identification of specific gene changes may help us to develop new targeted therapies. And these advances should lead to improved survival of both early and more advanced stages of the disease.